Welcome. Thanks so much for coming. I'm Amanda. You're back with the Sacred Sound of the Soul for the Cell of Yoga Sound Institute. And today we're going to talk to our amazing faculty member, Christine Stevens. She uh, likes to say the drum is my peace pool, founder of Upbeat Drum Circles. She's been featured on the Discovery Channel, NBC, KTLA, and in the DVD Discover the Gift. In 2005 through 2007, she led the first drum circle training for peace in the war zone of Iraq. She has since created drum programs with refugee women from Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Sudan in both El Cajon right here in our first local San Diego and Phoenix, Arizona. Last year, her online courses Awaken Your Rhythm and Awaken Your Healing Rhythm with the Shift Network united over 600 people from 37 countries. Her latest project, the Global Rhythm Sangha, features teachers from world cultures each month for a whole year. Check out her rhythm postcards and RDA recommended drumming allowance on her YouTube channel, Upbeat Drum Circles, or visit www.ubdrumcircles.com and check her out online courses and live event training coming up here at the Soul of Yoga. So please welcome a global troubadour, Christine Stevens. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. I'm looking forward to coming to the Soul of Yoga, the sacred sound of the soul, to teach in July an advanced weekend of how we can put together a one-hour protocol with drums for healing, wellness, spirituality, and personal growth. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this upcoming course that you have coming with us. It was um, a really a passion of mine after meeting you and experiencing your drumming workshop. I just knew right away that this was something that we needed to get out to more people in a in a way that was approachable for more. So thank you so much for, for working with us on that. Um, you know, would you mind talking a little bit about the history of drumming? Sure. Uh, this is a frame drum. It's uh, empty on the center, has a thin diameter, and this one is, happens to be made by Remo Drum Company. They're made in America, vegetarian, vegan. And the <laughs> idea of the frame drum is believed to be invented by women mm -hmm. from the grain sieve. So the circle, the hoop technology with a hide of an animal created a drum. This information we know about the history of drums comes from Lane Redman, who wrote the book, When the Drummers Are Women, and Mickey Hart, great mentor of mine from The Grateful Dead, who wrote the book, Drumming at the Edge of Magic. And the first drummer whose name we know was written in cuneiform writing in ancient Sumar, Tigris Euphrates, is Lipashu, a woman who drummed in the temple of the moon. Wow. We know that the drum in ancient spiritual texts in the Judeo Bible, it says um, in Exodus, when Moses led the people across the parting of the Red Sea, it says Miriam picked up her frame drum and all the women did likewise. And so I do feel the drum has a lineage in the field now of sound healing. The drum has <clears throat> such a connection to spirituality. It was used for calling spirits. There's a really powerful ancient myth from Sumar in cuneiform writing, <clears throat> excuse me, the myth of Inanna, where Inanna's um, faithful servant, Ninshavar, drums in the temple of the moon to get the gods to go down into the underworld and save her. So there's a divine connection to this instrument. It's one of the easiest, most accessible things because the technique is like this, this complicated. Watch carefully. There you go. Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always say, you know, there's a mudra of the way we hold a frame drum. The frame drum holding position is a bit of a mudra. So I'm holding my drum, balancing my drum, and the vibration, I feel it on my heart. So whether it's a buffalo drum like you're holding, a frame drum, a shaman's drum, a doombeck goblet drum. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, I was at the Museum of Musical Instruments in Phoenix. <clears throat> and I got to experience the difference between the frames and goblet drums in an exhibit from the Congo in all the world drums. And just to see that this, this universality of this simple hoop called the daff in Iraq, 
the tar in different cultures, the frame drum, simple. It became the djembe, became the head of a dumbek. It became a buffalo drum in shaman cultures. So, you know, we're tapping into a very sacred lineage of the drum. The history of drumming is a spiritual story that begins in the feminine, believe it or not, begins with our hands on the drum before there were sticks and marching and snares, which became the drums of war. Yeah. First, there was the drum of peace and spiritual community building. Um, one of the great stories I love that is told in Mickey Hart's book, Drumming at the Edge of Magic, he was close friends with Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist, is the story of how the drum got one sided head. Because, you know, there's some drums that have two double heads. But the, the story is that Morgan Caro was a powerful shaman. And when people would get sick in the village, he would jump on his drum and ride his drum up to heaven and grab the soul and bring him back. And so nobody was getting to heaven. And this made God very angry. And so one day, right when Morgan Caro was jumping on his drum and riding up to catch a soul, God grabbed a lightning bolt and he threw it at Morgan Caro and it cracked the drum in half. And that's why the drum has one side. Has one Open. side. <laughs> that's amazing. I love. I didn't know that. That's how the buffalo drum came, but it makes sense. It looks just like a frame drum. And the same thing yep. with. Are these called? Djembe. Djembe. That's a djembe. A djembe is a smaller, sim similarly shaped goblet drum, okay. and then darabuka would be its name. So I like to teach that there's three main types of drums, frames and buffalo drums and body drums. And the mm -hmm. third category is ambient drums. So you have ocean drums, you yes. know, rain sticks, instruments of ambient sounds that come from nature. Uh, would you mind, everybody wants to know, of course, what about the science? Tell me, I wanna hear the actual hardcore facts. Can you tell us some of the science on drumming for sound healing? Yeah, the main study that happened in 2001 was looking at blood samples before and after an hour of group drumming. Now the participants in the study were non-drummers. So they didn't, they weren't, oh yeah, I want to go to a drum circle and have fun. No, these people, <laughs> they were just paid to come take the study. So blood samples before and after one hour of a protocol that included breathing and guided imagery and closing your eyes and drumming and drumming your name and some of the things that you and I have put together for this upcoming training in July this year. So using some of those protocol steps, the results were extraordinary. Comparing blood samples of immune system markers, such as cytokine activity, immunoglobulin A and B, markers of orchestrators of the immune system, you might say. And you know, we know how important the immune system is right now with all the coronavirus scare. Like we Absolutely. have to really have a good immune system. So what happened is, we showed a significant improvement in all these natural killer cell activity, these immune system blood sample markers. It's not just in our heads, it's in our body, it's in our cellular biology. The drumming in this method helps us de-stress. Now, in that same study, the first condition we tried was just a drum circle and people got worse because they had performance anxiety and it was too much drumming, it exceeded their exercise potential. So we've had to really learn what is the sweet spot? It's just like walking into a yoga class. I might not be able to do a hand headstand on my first session. You know, this is a creative muscle that we develop over time. Um, that's one scientific study. And I'll just share one other sci science study that's just most recently come out from England where they are now doing social prescribing. So doctors can actually prescribe you to go to a drum circle. Yes. And insurance companies are paying or a chorus. So what they found in a study with mental health consumers is that the drumming not only improved mood states, decreased depression, decreased anxiety. They did a 12 week series, twice a week for 90 minutes, pretty substantial amount of time. But the significant change was it reduced inflammation. Wow. This is an anti-inflammatory. Wow. This is your shot of turmeric. No wonder why I always feel so good after drumming circle. You know, and it's not just our individual, right? We do, we feel different. We feel shifted. I just taught yesterday on the Shift Network and people were saying like, wow, in just one hour, without even talking, just musically talking, conversing, 
I feel better. But I think the secondary po positive aspect of this is the community bonding. Mm -hmm. When I came to Soul of Yoga and we had that workshop on drumming up spirit, half the people in a survey that we did post event said that the most important part for them was the feeling of unity, that we're just doing something together. So this is ancient, it's in our tribal blood. We close our eyes and drum and we see ourselves around a fire. We don't know why, but we all have the need for that right now. We have a need for community, belonging, bonding. And this is a tool that allows generations of people, different languages, different races, to have a conversation and feel a common heartbeat. I love that. Thank you so much for, for talking about that. And it's right now, the popularity with drumming is a drum circle monthly. Um, but you and I have the vision of making it uh, more reachable for people. So we're in uh, initiating a weekly drumming class for people to be able to come a part of the soul of yoga. It's a part of their monthly package. So it's not anymore. It's just a part of the package for people to come and drum together and find a community. That's exactly what everybody is asking for with, with all of our sound healing classes. And I just love that we have an opportunity for drumming. Would you mind talking a little bit about the applications for drumming and sound healing settings? I know that uh, the drum massage is my favorite. <laughs> um, yes. Sorry, there's an alarm going off. <laughs> yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> It must be drum setting time. Uh -huh. Time to drum massage yourself. <laughs> so basically, the drum has a mouth, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's open mouth here. And if I turn the drum, I'm getting the camera correctly, I turn the drum <laughs> where you can see the energy of the vibration is going to come towards wherever I'm placing the drum. I don't want to place it on my body because it will choke the sound, it will be a little burst or pull, pull. But if I hold the drum just a little away from my body and I bounce my hand in the high five position, everybody do this. You wanna be in the high five, thumb out, four fingers together and bounce. And I feel that vibration, right? So that's the bass tone, it represents the element of earth. You know, you can put this over your heart when you feel, okay, to feel more grounded, you know, whatever it is. That's so easy to do. Yeah. That feels so good. We grew from this rhythm. We were all incubated in this rhythm. Right. Consistent. And then you talk about adding your voice. Yes, you can, well, you can sing into the frame drum. The note of the drum. And it'll resonate. So the drum massage, um, I had, I think of it as a probiotic. One time I had a terrible upset stomach and I just played my drum over my belly. Man, I mean, just think of how non-invasive this supplement is. Absolutely. I just used it with my daughter. I have a six-year-old, almost six-year-old daughter. And we yeah. both just caught colds and she was coughing up a lot of phlegm. And I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse. I'm an ER nurse. And I thought the first thing we're going to do is get the drum out. And I did. I drummed over her little chest. She flipped over and asked me to do it on her back. And that night she had a nice big present in the Kleenex, but it got out of her. It really vibrated from uh, the lungs and helped her get it out, which was phenomenal. So I think so many people these days are looking for uh, holistic wellness without side effects something that they can implement without side effects like medications. And I think that the drumming is, is one of those innate, beautiful modalities that we can use right at home. I mean, you can use anything for a drum. I love that you talk about, I mean, tell us some of the wildest things you've ever used for a drum when you didn't have, you know, the typical drumming apparatus. Well, two wild stories. One is a five gallon water jug is a wonderful, turn it upside down, decorate it with some stickers, put some words of gratitude, joy, and love. And you can play that, it sounds fantastic. I've done bucket drumming, which is yeah. a free instrument all over the world. Those buckets, paint buckets with sticks, or I use um, Chinese chopsticks sometimes. And the third one that was really interesting was when we were working in Iraq, we needed a bass drum. So my colleague, Dr. Craig Woodson, ethnomusicologist, he, went out into the market and got a really big plastic garbage can. We put 
garbage um, bin. We put duct tape around it in the colors of the Kurdish and Iraqi flags. Oh, so we combined yeah. the cultures. And then we used um, mallets, which we made with a dowel. And then you just put tons of rubber bands at the end of the dowel, of the yeah. dowel and you've made a mallet. And then all of a sudden we had this, not only a bass drum, we turned it upside down as a tub and put all the instruments in it. So we could just, we made soda can shakers. Yeah. You know, we were kind of in a, a crisis in a war zone where we didn't really have our hands on lots of drums. So we made a lot of percussion. And, you know, I think what's exciting about what you're doing, what we're talking about here to talk to our, your audience about today is this field of sound healing is really, um, it's really ignited globally because sound baths, you know, tons of people come into sound baths because we need something that is healing to our vibration, our subtle body. We're, we're, our yoga practice is important where we do asanas and poses. But I think also that the sound part balances the visual. In all history of Tantra, you have the yantra, the mantra, right? You have the vision and the sound. And you're bringing us into the sound tools. We all can tone. We all can hum. We all can drum. Last week, I had a lesson with a very famous hand clapping expert from flamenco style from the gypsies in Spain. And I learned three different kinds of clap sounds. And I was like, wow. I mean, there's so much we can do from these world traditions. In a way, I think the West is really behind. Most of the world is dancing and drumming and they have less illness, less stress, more community bonding. Let's learn from those cultures in the world and bring that into our yoga studios. Absolutely. Not just our yoga studios. Right now we have uh, people who are who have been trained under your protocol. They came to your workshop in January and they're uh, just, we just filled a position at um, our local high school for uh, 14 to 16 year old boys. You know, uh, I just checked out the I know right here in Poway, we had a school shooting. We also had one locally in Santee yeah. all over the country. And the, the main shooters are young white men. And the biggest thing that I could even looking at my nephew, who I saw playing the combat games, and that was more of what he was interested in. And I thought they don't want to talk. Some of them don't even want to go to yoga, but I bet you anything they will hit a drum. And that's, that's the vision that I see. I see drumming not only in yoga studios, I see it in hospitals, I see it in schools, and I just commend you and thank you so much for all that you're doing to bring drumming to the world. One of the things, one of the stories that you told me um, a little while back really made me stop and get into my heart and realize just how powerful drumming is. Would you mind talking about what happened in the Middle East when you went? Sure, yeah. I mean, it was... Uh... In 2005, 2006, and 2007, I was invited by an international relief organization to work with the Kurdish and Arabic and Yazidi populations, 40 people from Northern Iraq. And they brought them all together. And these were enemy groups whose fathers probably fought on opposite lines. We taught this drum circle training for five days in a former torture center of Saddam Hussein. There were bullet holes in the walls, you know? and after five days of just drumming, no talking, you know, really just drumming. And I was teaching this kind of protocol and I trained them to be facilitators in their communities of Ashti drum or drum salam. So helping with the Kurdistan Save the Children, the youth activity centers in Kirkuk, places of generational st um, stress, PTSD, trauma. And the result was so successful, it was written up in the United Nations compendium of peacemaking through music. And we also had a statistic, I took before and after statistics, and the group of 40 people rated themselves 90% more connected as a community after five days of drumming. And you think about how much money we spend on weapons. The cost of that program, the cost of the drums, I mean, the whole thing all together was something like $30,000. It's like not even a few bullets. So I think that you know, we're just on the edge of how we can bring drumming into peace building again, which is its original lineage. And next month I'll be Skyping into Puerto Rico 
for a seminar on music for healing for trauma after the earthquake survivors in the tent villages. So we're really interested in where words can't come, where trauma has happened. How does that heartbeat, how does that unity, it's really the group coming together. How does that hold us together? So from that experience in Iraq, I think I felt, you know, I dyed my hair dark brown and I wore a headscarf. I really put my life at risk. I, I really you know, wore a bulletproof vest the whole nine yards. And when you do that for something you believe in, mm-hmm. you, I, I feel, felt like I had a deeper understanding. Uh, I higher, a higher level of carrying this tool from my understanding that if this works in a war zone, this can work with gangs, this can work with refugees, this can work with schools, this can work in greater levels than I ever imagined. (laughs) It's so incredible. This is so exciting to be at the precipice of some of a wellness modality that we know in our hearts, the sound healing is something that most people doesn't necessarily make sense in their head, but it makes sense in their inside of them to their soul. Uh, why should people come and take your training? Who Who is this training for coming up in July? Well, I'm glad we're dedicating three days, 25 hours for an immersive experience in how to play the drums, the frame drums, the goblet drums, the ambient drums, the bass drums, consistent patterns. How do you keep a consistent pattern? Um, over 25 years of training facilitators in drumming, I've developed a number of really fun exercises. You know, we partner up and we drum our names to each other. We have a lot of fun ways to practice. And I want people to leave with two main skills. One is facilitating a, a one hour program in a yoga studio. And the second one is integrating the drum into your wellness practice in your life whether it's a morning practice, a ceremony, or drumming in nature, whatever it feels like. And I guess the other one is just to bring it into a sound bath setting. If you're going to lead singing bowls or sound bath, where does the drum fit? It fits in the beginning. It fits in the ending to ground people, to complete this experience. It can be a heartbeat. So it will be an immersive weekend. If you have, if you have a heartbeat, you play the drum. This is not about an audition. You don't have a lot of technique. We're going to be learning the four element sounds on the drum and really working on this specific one hour protocol. How do I lead the beginning? How do I lead the drum circle part? How do I lead the guided imagery part? How do I close it? Just four steps. Beautiful, nice and simple. Yeah, nice and simple. And these healing rhythms that are from, the, from your body, it's healing to play the rhythm of laughter or skipping or the heartbeat or resting or breathing. And then going into the rhythms of life. What does inspiration sound like? Playfulness, transformation. Um, what does gratitude sound like on your drum? And then learning some world rhythms. What is the rhythm of Aguila Blanca, the Aztec dancing rhythm? So come and join us. I'm (laughs) going to have a sellout crowd because the drum is just such an accessible tool. I continue to find that people bought a drum. They didn't know why. It's been hanging on the wall. Yes. So it's time to dust it off and come join us. Drums are provided. Just come. Be part of the rhythm of life. That's, you know, that it is said that we are in the third shift of consciousness, that there's three phases. There was the, we might all remember the um, harmonic convergence. And now we're in the rhythmic symphony. So now we're finding ways to unite humanity through this simple practice of rhythm and bring it into a health practice in our country. Yeah. Well, wow. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Please come join us. It's July 17th through the 19th right here in beautiful Encinitas, California with Christine Stevens live in person, which I think is one of the greatest ways to experience her. (laughs) All right. Should we drum out? Yes. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Wonderful. Have a great day. Thank you.